So what is CSS? This is the second part in a three-part series that I'm doing on the three basic web technologies of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. If you missed the first part of this series, the HTML video, I will link it somewhere in the vicinity of this video. To start off with, CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets, and it is essentially what makes a website pretty or ugly, depending upon how you define your CSS. A website built in just HTML tends to look rather boring. Think about Craigslist, how everything is very bland, but the content is front and center and there's not really much to distract from the content. That's because Craigslist uses very little, if any, CSS at all. CSS is used to override HTML elements attributes, such as an H1 tag being bigger than an H2 tag or a link being blue. You can overwrite all of these properties and a million more with CSS. CSS controls how big, how small, how wide, how tall, the color, the shape of elements in HTML. It defines what font you want to use, defines how big your font is. All of those things are controlled in your CSS. The best way to use CSS is to make content pop or your application pop, the functionality of your application to be clear and things like that and not to distract away from the purpose of the website or the application that you're building. Good CSS makes things nice. Bad CSS makes things distracting and makes things harder to use. CSS can also be one of the most frustrating parts of modern web development. There are a million different memes out there for CSS because some things are rather mundane or difficult when it comes to writing that code, right? There are positioning problems and CSS falls short in certain places, but it is getting better and they're constantly iterating over and adding new features to make these things a little bit better. Because of a lot of these shortcomings of CSS, there have been lots of new technologies introduced that you can layer over your CSS to make it easier to write. Some of the most popular are frameworks like Bootstrap and Foundation, which are pre-built CSS components and grid systems, which allow you to easily make a website responsive and built for the modern web quickly because they come with all of these components that are already written CSS that you can customize and hack to make exactly the look you want, but they're already pre-built and easy to use, easy to just plop into your website or your application, and they work and they function. If you look at front-end development job postings, web developer postings, a lot of them will have a requirement for something like Bootstrap or Foundation. I keep mentioning those two because they're the most popular, but there are a ton more. A lot of places like people to have a familiarity with these kind of things because they use them in their app or they use them on their website. They're really, really, really popular. So having a firm understanding of CSS first and then understanding how to use a framework like the bootstraps or the foundations of the world is a really powerful tool to have in your belt if you're out there looking for a front end job. Past those big frameworks, another way to really beef up your CSS is to use a preprocessor like SAS or less. These two technologies add a layer onto CSS that improves its programmatic functionality. Essentially, it allows for the use of variables and formulas and mix-ins and a bunch of other things that just vanilla CSS does not come equipped with. They're both really powerful, really easy to use. They allow you to write more maintainable, scalable code. Having access to variables alone is one of the most awesome features about SAS and why I love it so much. If you're prototyping something out and you have this particular blue color that you really like and you write it all through your regular vanilla CSS and then one day your designer goes, we're going with brown instead, you have to find all of those, find and replace, and there's just a lot of you know maintenance work to keep up with that. Introducing a variable as your base color and your secondary color and your third color allows for quickly changing those out if something were to change. Just like Bootstrap and Foundation, SAS or less are found on a lot of job postings. They are pretty common technologies used by front-end web developers nowadays, so it is something that you should probably wrap your mind around when you're out there trying to search for a job. Being able to write in SAS and less and be able to point to projects where you've used those is definitely a way to have a leg up over somebody who's just got the generic CSS skill. Much like HTML, CSS is another one of those technologies that 
you can spend a few hours on and have a pretty good grasp of a lot of the functionality of it, but by no means will you have mastered it. It can take a lot of time spent just learning the intricacies and nuances of CSS to really have a firm grasp on how to use it to its maximum potential. I know a lot of people just want to get to the JavaScript when they're learning web development because that is the programming language, right? That's that like hard and fast rule. You have to know JavaScript to be able to get a job as a web developer. And while JavaScript is very important, and if you're wanting to build web apps, you have to know how to use JavaScript if that's kind of the role you're going for. Understanding CSS and becoming like a really good CSS expert is something that's pretty rare when it comes to a like fresh newbie programmer because it's something that people figure out how to change the size, the color, and the style on something, and they move on to JavaScript. So having that in your toolkit, being able to do CSS animations and some of the more advanced things, being able to use media queries and be able to build a ground up responsive website using CSS by yourself is a really impressive thing for a junior web developer with no experience. It shows that you really took your time to learn this technology and figure out exactly what what it was that would make you job ready. Now, this is just kind of a basic intro into what CSS is. I'm barely scratching the surface when it comes to all of the things that you can do with CSS. There are hours upon hours upon hours of tutorials out there. There are tons of blog entries. And one of the places that I always go back to when I'm having CSS problems is cssstricks.com. It's a super awesome website. The people over there are really good about explaining things in their tutorials and blog posts. And they have every little kind of intricacy and nuance that I was talking about kind of explained over there. So if you're looking for a specific problem, try finding it on CSS Tricks. I really love that website. If you guys like this video, please feel free to hit that like button because they are super awesome and they make me smile. If you want to keep following along in the journey, if you don't want to miss the next part in this series where I dive into the big bad JavaScript, feel free to hit that subscribe button. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, if I left anything out, if I got anything wrong, feel free to leave it down in the comments below. As always, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you again very soon. Bye.